the Great Pyramid Hoax. Yes, well, the Great Pyramid Hoax hasn't gone very far, and, of course, that's not surprising. Something that's sort of such a basis to uh, everything we believe. Just like other topics we've been seeing that have been falling like the towers. But the pyramids are holding firm. Because, I mean, that pyramid power, that's pretty special. And a lot of people thrive on pyramid power. So they don't like their pyramids debunked. Now, originally, uh, I made a video about Tutankhamun and the treasure. And how I considered the treasure was no doubt fabricated in London or outside of London somewhere, in some little rural community, uh, by Master uh, Brass Smiths, as it were, uh, etc., and artisans. And then they could parade that around the world and say they found it here in Egypt. So that sort of adds to what I'm going to talk about now. But it was Dave Johnson, and this is his video up here, and somebody else's... Uh, put it up and I thought that was good because this is really something that should be spread so love or hate Dave Johnson this was a good topic and it just sprung from the idea of the treasure uh, being fake why not all the whole buildings and this video appeared and I made a video the next day saying the day the pyramids died because it truly was uh, an outstanding find just to go back and look at the images and see how many different depictions there are of this thing. Now he's got this really nutted here. I'll just start playing it. Then I'll play his narration as well. If this wants to play for some reason, it's stalling. Oh, here we go. Oh, get rid of that box. So you see, we've got 1572 uh, that they've put this imagery down to. And you can see their pyramids on top of plateaus. Now, we know artists don't depict things exactly, but I mean to say, now look at this. That's quite a bit different, isn't it? And there's a whole lot of little pyramids, little miniature pyramids, and strange buildings in the background, and <laughs> he's got high written there for the head. And it's interesting how the head goes from uh, female to male eventually. Maybe from male to female, back to male, in fact. It's a very strange head indeed. Now, this is an idealised sort of idea here, but look, there's no little pyramids like that. Just a couple over in a very far background, I noticed. Look at this one here with little pyramids up in the left-hand corner. Lots of little measurements. And definitely a woman's head. A woman's head. And look, the pyramid dimensions and everything are uh, sort of quite a bit different to what we see there today. Now, I think these things have been something for a while, but they've been added on, and really the best part of them was built between 1700 and 1800. Something to do with the uh, French and Napoleon being down there, no doubt. And see, look at this Cain Abel thing. It, even it's everything we know, we don't know anything before a thousand. That's my estimation things at the moment. You can forget all that flamenco stuff, there's a lot of rot in that. There's a few good little tidbits in Fomenko. The rest take with a grain of salt. It's just the uh, controlled opposition alternative rubbish. But look at these images here. Look at the little hidden away sphinx looking this way. And then it's back to a bit of a man's head there by the look of it. It goes backwards and forwards. So there's definitely been some chicanery. It's very similar to Stonehenge. And people say, why? Well, they're obviously hiding something, aren't they? They're, or cre and they're creating a Disneyland. One idea I have is they wanted to have people interested in um, holding the Middle East because of the control on Africa you can exercise and also the control on Central Asia. Uh, it's a sort of wheel point, you might say. And so you've got to make it interesting. And also, this has been just, I mean, it's on the US dollar bill. And that gives you a little bit of an idea of the scope of what we're looking at here. And look how he's got the 1724, uh, uh, which, you know, we said that 421. And look at this head of the pyramid. Look how different that looks. There's so many inconsistencies. There's so many. And then we consider the fraudulence of the treasure. It sort of adds up pretty bad.
in my opinion. And just looking at the changing stints, we've got some good pictures here, like this is a more recent one, obviously. If you go back in time, look at this strange image here. The angle seems different, doesn't it? And that's not that long ago, but I mean it's probably turn of the century type ideas. Now look at that one. That's quite a bit different even in the head to me. Especially the scale seems, you know, these seem larger than what ultimately is there. Look, it's a little pinhead compared. Look at this. And then look at that one. Look how much bigger that head looks. But admittedly, this is sort of some sort of uh, lithograph. It doesn't look like a real um, painting. Little strange eyes that they've put on it here. But nothing adds up in this whatsoever. And my idea with these pyramids is that they've been big rock outcrops, something like this. And they've just carved these down. And then they've put rocks maybe on the outside, smaller blocks all the way on their carving, as it were, carved this basic shape out, and then just uh, rendered it over with blocks. So it gives it the impression it's all made of blocks. Now we've seen things like that with Baalbek. That would be one idea of the construction I have anyway. Uh, I'm open to suggestions on that. But I think that's likely what we have uh, looking at here. Just judging from the old depictions, the mountains seem bigger. I know that's a big, a big job, definitely. But uh, with a whole lot of soldiers running around over time a big Masonic movement to get this done. You see how they're, they're shown here. So what did they do, build these things up here? Well, this, this was the idea at the time. They hadn't even built it yet in 1572, you see. Very interesting. They just uh, would be like the biggest mine game that you can think of other than NASA. See, now, this guy is supposed to come from 714 BC. So, we're meant to believe that this uh, statue head or bust is from that old. And it's come down to us in that state. And, of course, there's all sorts of stone depictions of this guy through Assyria and temples and what have you. These sort of things here, here's a good example. All part of that culture with the owl, like Minerva. This is actually Enheduanna. This is Sargon's priestess daughter. With the detail of the wings. And this has come from 700 BC. I was watching a documentary and they're walking through some museums and whatever. And uh, they had all these statues there and they were saying, yeah, this is two and a half thousand years old. Look at that one with the horns coming out. A bit, of a bit of a link to the old Norwegian idea somewhat, isn't it? It's Sargon. So you see, it's not just uh, Egypt that needs to be looked at. This is uh, Naram Sim. He's the grandson of Sargon. You know the details here. So this has come down to us two and a half thousand years. It reminds me so much of the Colosseum statues. I'll look for some uh, Syrian ruins and just see, because I saw that Palmyra, which we saw in the news to do with Viz, and that looked such a fraud. It looked like something to make a place in the middle of nowhere a tourist attraction, if I've ever seen one. See, a lot of these ruin sites really need some examination. What have we here, you know? This is meant to be things like this. As you can see. Now look at this one here. That's a uh, definite medieval look about it. Now it doesn't. This is the Palace of Sargon. And is this meant to be two and a half thousand years old? Well, a lot of them have this medieval look about all this stuff. 
the whole of the Middle East. To me, it's some sort of there's, there's a swifty going on here, and a lot of people don't like it because you know all their beliefs are challenged. That is the big thing about it. The big thing about it, indeed. So I'll be looking more at this topic, and hopefully a few other people have got some ideas. Look at these motifs here. So this sort of stuff. This is in Kurdistan. And as I said, look, there's a big cross there. See, so this could definitely date from uh, the Crusaders. Let's get everybody interested and make this all up here so that, you know, we can get tourist bucks down there. That's what it was all about, remember? They always said, oh, you know, it was to get the tourists down there. We've got to give them something to look at and uh, build up your other narratives that you've been getting them into about the place. It could be well the possibilities. The possibilities are endless once you destroy the pyramids and once you destroy this sort of stuff. And to me, uh, this is two and a half thousand years old. With that sort of detail, I'm finding it very hard to believe. Very hard to believe indeed. What else is there here in this, this little puzzle of Sargon? The Sargon puzzle, let's call it that. And the ruins, you know, they're always very fanciful, the uh, things like this. This is Sargon's palace. It doesn't look much like that one in Turkey, does it? They had different architecture, did they, when they went to Turkey? Oh, look, what's this? This is, this is the ruins here. Okay, let's look at this here. Uh, so that's what we get, eh? Again, I'm going to do some more videos on this because this definitely needs uh, some of this brickwork here. Two and a half thousand years old. I'm definitely not certain of that. And this is supposed to be some great big city. One of those ones you saw up there. They're always like that. They're never, the ruins are never do justice to the uh, plan and there doesn't seem to be many ruins left. Oh, people took them away somewhere to build a, another building, but often there's nothing much in sight. So I think we this place is 25 acres. I'm just reading it. 25, 25 acres, no doubt. There you go, eh? There's a lot of mystery in this Sargon stuff too. Don't worry. And look, we have a little pyramid.